questions on looking at equilibrium with a graph. So we have some on here, and then in the notes, the video example that we're going to go through had the graph as well. So this whole chapter is on equilibrium, and I kind of call this the general equilibrium chapter, but we actually talk about equilibrium until March. It just is different types of equilibrium. So this chapter is general equilibrium where we look at Kc and Kp, so we look at concentration and pressure. Um, and when we talk about equilibrium, we call it a dynamic equilibrium. So a dynamic equilibrium exists when the rates of the forward reaction and the reverse reaction are equal. So like in the do now we talked about in kinetics, we had that double arrow, and we were able to use the idea that the rates of the forward and reverse reaction are equal. When we talk about the forward reaction, that is reactants going to products. When we talk about the reverse reaction, that's products going to reactants. And so we always have two reactions occurring if we're at equilibrium. This is super, super, super important. The reaction does not stop. When we're talking about equilibrium, the reaction does not stop. To us, it might look like it has because the concentrations remain equal, but the reaction is still going. Instead, there's just no change in concentration. It just remains constant. So the reaction keeps going. We use this double arrow. So when you see a double arrow, that tells us that you're at equilibrium. And this tells us that the reaction is reversible. So forward goes reactants to products, reverse is products to reactants. That's what it means to be reversible. When we look at graphs down here, so these are two different graphs. One is concentration, one is rate. That's why they look a little bit different. It represents the same reaction, and that's the reaction from the notes that was NO2 and N2O4. So here, this is still kind of like what we've looked at with kinetics. So here we have concentration versus time. So notice here we start with a certain amount of N2O4. Over time, it's getting used up. We look at NO2, we're starting with zero NO2, and over time it's being created. Well, that tells us that N2O4, if it's being used up, is a reactant. NO2 is being formed, it's a product. Once we hit the time when the concentrations remain constant, we've hit equilibrium. So once we've hit the point where the concentrations are the same, nope, not the same, constant, We've hit equilibrium. Now if we look at the rates, so here we're looking at the rates. Here's the rate law, K times the concentration of the reactant. K times concentration of the reactant, because it's the forward reaction and the reverse reaction. Well here, because it's rate, once the rates are equal, we've achieved equilibrium. So we can look at graphs in two different ways, concentration and rate. Concentrations remain constant, right? Notice these two concentrations aren't equal. What becomes equal at equilibrium are the rates. Then this also looked at writing the equilibrium constant. So some things we have to keep in mind with the equilibrium constant is that if it's Kc, it wants us to focus on concentration. That means we do brackets. Kp means pressure, so you have to put a capital P for partial pressure. College Board loves asking questions like that, and if they ask for Kp and you do brackets, you don't get the points. So Kc means concentration, Kp means pressure. The way that we actually get the equilibrium constant is from the idea that the rates are equal, that the forward rate equals the reverse rate. And when we actually do rate of the forward reaction over the rate of the reverse reaction. You think about the rate constants. So rate constant, Kf over Kr. Lowercase k's represent the rate constant. That's what we looked at in kinetics. Well, the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant is how we actually get the equilibrium constant. So when we do the forward reactions rate constant divided by the reverse reactions rate constant, that's how we get our equilibrium constant. Equilibrium constant does not ever have units. 
So this video example, this was the last thing. It was on page four of the notes. So this is actually a question that AP put out. And it says the graph below shows the relationship between concentration and time for a reversible reaction involving A, B, and C. A and B are the reactant, C is the product. That's what it tells us. Part A says write a balanced equation that could be represented by the graph. So it wants a balanced equation. Reactants yield products. That's what it wants. What we have to do is we have to use this graph. So we're actually going to be using the idea of kinetics to help us figure out the coefficients. So we know that A and B are the reactants. So I'm just going to start by writing A plus B. And it says it's a reversible reaction. So double arrow. I do the shortened version. Looks like this. You wanted to just do right, double arrow like that. That's fine as well. They mean the same thing. And we know that we produce C. But what we have to do is we have to figure out what the coefficients are. Are they all equal? Is there a 2? And so what we have to do is we have to look at this graph. So there's some things that we can look at from this graph and relate it back to kinetics. So notice that A and B are both decreasing. And then they plateau. C is increasing, and then it plateaus. Well, one thing that I'm going to mark here, right at 20 seconds, this is when we hit equilibrium. I know this is when we hit equilibrium because notice after 20 seconds, the concentrations remain constant. So as the reaction is going, they remain constant. Now to figure out the coefficients, you look at the slope. You can look at the rate. So notice how A and B are decreasing by the same amount. That means they have the same coefficients. So notice how B is going from 0 0.5 to 0 0.3. 0 0.5 to 0 0.3 is 0.2. It's changing by 0.2 molar from 0.5 to 0.3. A is going from 0.4 to 0.2. It's also changing by 0.2 molar. Those have the same rates. They have the same coefficients. Right, same coefficients. Well, let's look at C. C goes from 0 to 0.4. So in that same amount of time, this is all in 20 seconds, C is going up to 0.4 molar. Well, how does 0.4 compare to 0.2? Double. Double. So C's coefficient is double. So this coefficient we can figure out from the rate. Rate of increase, rate of decrease. We're just looking at how much does it change. Then part B from the balanced equation in A, right? The equilibrium constant expression Kc for the reaction at equilibrium. Equilibrium constants are capital K's. Capital K is an equilibrium constant. Products over reactants. These are all gases, so we can include them in the equilibrium constant expression. You can only include gases in aqueous solutions. So Kc, and because there's a 2 here, C is squared. That's our Kc expression. So for example 1, it says suppose that the gas phase reactions A to B and B to A are both elementary processes with rate constants of 3.8 times 10 to the negative second and 3.1 times 10 to the negative first, respectively. So now it's taking us back to kinetics. We have two reactions, A going to B and B going to A. So that tells us it's a reversible reaction. We have A going to B and B going back to A. That's a reversible reaction. For part A, when it asks, what is the value of the equilibrium constant for the equilibrium A goes to B? Well, they don't give us concentrations or pressures in this. Instead, what they give us is rate constants. So we're going to actually go back even further to the definition of an equilibrium constant. And the definition of an equilibrium constant so I'm just using KEQ. EQ just means equilibrium. 
right? Kc, that's concentration. Kp is pressure. I'm just going to use Keq because this could be for right, any equilibrium constant. To calculate the equilibrium constant, we can do the rate constant of the forward reaction divided by the rate constant of the reverse reaction. Notice the difference. Capital K is the equilibrium constant. Lowercase k is the rate constant. Those are two different variables. Capital K is equilibrium. Lowercase k is rate constant. And so what we can do is we can use this information that they gave us, because they gave us the rate constants, and we can plug it in. This is actually how we derive the equilibrium constant, how we get products over reactants. And so I'm going to go ahead and just plug in my rate constant. So the forward reaction is A going to B, reactants going to products. The rate constant of the forward reaction is 3.8 times 10 to the negative second. The rate constant of the reverse reaction, that means B going to A, is 3.1 times 10 to the negative first. Notice how my per seconds cancels. This is actually why the equilibrium constant does not have units. So if you do 3.8 E negative 2 divided by 3.1 E negative 1, we can get our value of our equilibrium constant. I got 0 0.123. Again, no units, it's just a number. Things to keep in mind at the equilibrium constant, it should never be negative. Remember, rate constants can never be negative. So our equilibrium constant should never be negative. It's going to be a number um, greater than zero, and it could go up to infinity. All right, so it's always a positive number. Then for part B, which is greater in equilibrium, the partial pressure of A or the partial pressure of B. So like we did in the do now, we want to look at KEQ. Right, look at the equilibrium constant. And I'm going to write some stuff. I'll write it over here that if you want to add, you can. So if K is greater than 1, And Kf is greater than Kr. Right, the forward reaction is greater than the reverse reaction. If the forward reaction is greater, the rate is greater than the reverse reaction. Right, or the rate constant is greater. That means you have more products. Right, so A goes to B. And B is favored. So when your equilibrium constant is greater than 1, we would say that products are favored. We have more products at equilibrium. If K is less than 1, then KR is greater than KF. The reverse rate constant is greater. So B goes to A. And A is favored. So notice how this is revolving around the number one, right? Not being negative, it's revolving around it being number being one. When K is one, your products and reactants are equal. When K is greater than one, right, we're still at equilibrium, but if K is greater than one, we would have more products at equilibrium. K is less than one. Like in our example, right, 0.123 is less than 1, we have more reactants. So, to answer part B, since K is less than 1, right, so capital K or KEQ,
the reverse reaction is favored. So the partial pressure, if the reverse reaction is favored, that's B going to A. So the partial pressure of A is greater. So when you have a small equilibrium constant, the reverse reaction is favored. That means products go to reactants. So the partial pressure of A will be greater. You have more reactants at equilibrium when K is less than 1. So this is thinking about how the equilibrium constant relates to the rate constant. If you have your rate constants and that's all you have, you can still find the equilibrium constant by doing the forward rate constant divided by the reverse rate constant. Yes, K can be 1. If it's 1, then you would have equal amounts of products and reactants. Yeah. Yeah, if K equals 1, you have equal amounts of products and reactants. If it's um, less than 1, you have more reactants. Greater than 1, you have more products. For example two, All right, so example one looked at the rate constant and how that affected the equilibrium constant, how we could find the equilibrium constant from our rate constants. Now we're gonna look at writing the equilibrium constants like we did in the do now using balanced equations. So for number two, write the expression for Kc. So it's going to be really, really important that we read the question carefully. Wants us to write the expression for Kc for the following reactions. Kc means that we need to write the equilibrium constant expression based around concentration. Then it says in each case indicate whether the reaction is homogeneous or heterogeneous. So we'll do that at the end. I wanna focus on the equilibrium constant expressions first. So remember that this lowercase c means concentration. And the most general way to write a K expression, I'm just gonna write it right here. The most general way to write a KC expression is concentration of products over concentration of reactants. If it's KC, it's concentration of products over concentration of reactants. Equilibrium constant expressions are always products over reactants, but something to keep in mind is that it's only gas and aqueous solutions. Only gases and aqueous solutions can be plugged into equilibrium constant expressions. So if we look at part A, what I like to do when I'm given a balanced equation and I read the question and I notice that it's talking about equilibrium or I notice that there's a double arrow. I like to look through the equation and say, okay, no solids or liquids. So no solids or liquids, which means everything can go into the equilibrium constant expression. So if we look at A, switch colors. KC, make sure that you give that subscript because we'll be working with lots of different Ks. Right now we're just focusing on Kc and Kp. So if we take a look at this, products over reactants, Kc means we're dealing with concentration. So the concentration of N2O times the concentration of NO2. It's like the rate law, they're multiplied together over reactants. Concentration of NO, because there's a three here, that gets cute. There's part A. Again, we'll do the homogeneous and heterogeneous at the very end once we've written all of these expressions. Part B, again, the first thing I like to do, I notice there's a double arrow. I like looking at it and saying, okay, gas, there's a solid. I like to put a small x under the solid. That way I'm not, you know, crossing stuff out in the equation just in case I need the equation for something else. 
CO is a gas. All right, so if I want the KC expression, it is always products over reactants. So the concentration of CO to the fourth over the concentration of NiCO4. There's our KC expression. Products over reactants every time. The, expo or the coefficients become an exponent. Part C. Are there any solids or liquids in part C? No, right? None of the states of matter are solids or liquids, so everything can go into our KC expression. So see if you can write the KC expression for part C. So hopefully yours looks like this. You don't have to include the states of matter, but you include everything else. H plus, that's the substance itself. F minus, that's the substance itself. And then part D. So again, take a look at the equation. You know you're writing a K expression. You cannot include solids and liquids because they do, they do not have a concentration. Solid, solid. So those will not be included, which means that my KC expression is the concentration of Ag plus squared over the concentration of Zn2 plus. Now I always get the question, well, what happens if both of, right, let's say both of these are solids? What does your K expression look like if you have, or let's say this is a liquid instead? Well, if you have nothing as a product, it's a one. So if the, both of these were solids, or one was a solid and one was a liquid, you're not going to have a zero on the, in the numerator. You're going to have a one. So it would be one over the reactants. Same thing if, it, if both the reactants were a solid. You'd have products over one. And that's okay. You can have that. Um, so the last thing is to indicate whether the reaction is homogeneous or heterogeneous. So just like with mixtures, just like with catalysis, we're looking at are all of the states of matter the same or are states of matter that are in this system different? So if we look at A, we have gas, gas, and gas. They're all the same. So A is homogeneous. B, we have gas, solid, and gas. It's not asking about the expression, it's asking about the reaction. Gas, solid, gas. There are different states of matter. That's a heterogeneous reaction. C, aqueous, aqueous, aqueous. They're all the same. So that's a homogeneous reaction. And then finally, in D, we have solid and aqueous. So that's heterogeneous reaction. So the biggest thing with example two is writing the expression. If it's Kc, it wants concentration. We'll look at what happens if they want Kp as well, but P would be pressure. So we have to make sure that we distinguish between Kc and Kp, because the values are not actually the same. In the video, it showed you how you can convert between Kp and Kc. So they are different values. All right, so for example three, this is now asking about what there is more of at equilibrium. So when the following reactions come to equilibrium, does the equilibrium mixture contain mostly reactants or mostly products? So this is just like in the do now as well when we looked at what we have more of. So when we're looking at what we have more of, we need to look at K. 
So to determine, let me just write it over here. Right, we can add extra information. To determine what exists at equilibrium. So if we're looking at do we have more reactants or more products, look at K. All right, so whether it's KC, KP, I'll just do KEQ. So look at the equilibrium constant. If K uh, is greater than one, products are favored. That means we have more products because think about how you write the K expression. It's products over reactants. So if K is greater than one, your numerator is larger, you have more products. If K is less than one, reactants are favored. If K is less than one, that means that your denominator must be larger, which means you have more products at equilibrium. And again, if K equals one, you have equal amounts of reactants and products. So if we take a look at A, our case C, Our Kc expression, or our value of Kc, is 1.5 times 10 to the negative 10. So that is nine zeros in front of this one, right? Point nine zeros one five. It's a very, very, very small number. But notice it's still a positive number. So for A, Kc is much less than one. So it's mostly reactants. So that means that when A comes to equilibrium, the definition of equilibrium is that the rates are equal. You're going to have much more N2 and O2 than you are NO. And then part B, again, look at the K. So KP, P just means we're looking at pressures now. 2.5 times 10 to the ninth. So that's eight zeros after this. It's a very large number. So KP is much larger than one. So it's mostly products. Since Kp is much larger than 1, that means that it's mostly products at equilibrium. Now, if K is close to 1, let's say that K is 5. Right? That is, comparing to these numbers, that's close to 1. So K being 5 means you're going to have just a little bit more product than reactant. So when you want to know what you have more of at equilibrium, you look at your value of K. K tells you what you have more of at equilibrium because K is products over reactants. So then you just compare products to reactants. So we're going to skip um, example four because I realized I put example four in. Uh, we're, we'll come back to it. But... That deals with um, video three. So we'll come back to example four once we go through video three. So we'll skip to example five. So this is on page 12. And this is similar to the video example that we looked at yesterday, um, where yesterday we wrote the balanced equation based on the graph. So we had to look at the graph, write the balanced equation, and write the K expression, and now we're actually calculating. So I do want to just point out on this graph, again, where we can tell that it's at equilibrium. So we tell where it's at equilibrium once we notice that all of the concentrations are remaining constant over time. The reaction is not stopping 
concentrations are just remaining constant. So we hit equilibrium at 20 seconds. So here's the balanced equation. A plus B is at equilibrium with 2C. So A says write the equilibrium constant expression, Kc. So Kc means that we have to be dealing in concentration. Now let's assume uh, that these are all gases. So that's going to be important. So let's assume they're all gases. That means that they can all be included in the K expression. So it's products over reactants. C squared, because of this 2, over reactants. Concentration of A times concentration of B. And then part B says calculate the value. Oh, this should say 285. This is going to be the same temperature. Like, ah. Uh. All right, so this should be 285 Kelvin. Otherwise, you have to do more math, and that's not what we want. So to write the K expression, here's what we need. We need the concentrations at equilibrium. We need to know what are the concentrations of each of these at equilibrium equilibrium. So we need concentration at equilibrium. So look at where this hits equilibrium. Look at what the concentrations are. C, if I follow it over, C is 0.4 molar. B is 0.3 molar. And A is 0.2 molar. I'm just reading the graph. At equilibrium, when the concentrations remain constant, we can read the graph, and then we can plug that in. So C, 0.4, don't forget to square C. Don't forget to square And then just be careful how you plug it in your calculator. So 0.4 squared divided by, I would use parentheses, 0.2 times 0.3. You get 2.67. Remember, K has no units. So here's where, right, this is relatively close to 1. And if you notice, your concentrations, your amount of product and reactant is similar. It's similar. Um, so that's why your K is closer to 1. So that's just using this graph. They love to ask these graph questions. And so you can get everything you need from the graph. You just need to be able to identify once you've hit equilibrium. All right, so one more before kind of our break in between. So example 6. Example 6 gives us a table. So the reason I put this in is to show you that it's important that we just look and see what the table means. What does the table mean? What are they giving us in the table? So this is for the reaction given above. A system at 298 Kelvin has the following partial pressures at equilibrium in three separate experiments. So some things I want to make note of. These are the pressures at equilibrium. That's important because that means we can plug it right in to the equilibrium constant expression if we need to. So all of these are at equilibrium. This is just a way that they're giving us pressures. It's just a way that they're giving us all the pressures. Part A, write the equilibrium constant expression Kp. So now they ask for Kp for the reaction given above. So for this reaction, we want to write Kp. Now the important thing for Kp is that it's pressure. When you are writing a Kp expression, the only thing that can have a pressure is a gas. So when we're dealing with Kp expressions, 
can only put gases into that expression. Aqueous solutions won't have a pressure, right? just gases. So if we want to write the expression Kp, now we're dealing with pressure, so no brackets anymore. We're dealing with partial pressure, so that's a capital P. It's still products over reactants. So the partial pressure of xy2 over the partial pressure of x times the partial pressure of y2. There's our Kp expression. College Board loves trying to ask questions about Kp or Kc because if they ask for Kp and you include brackets in here, they will not award you a point. So it's really important that you're paying attention whether it's Kp or Kc. So then calculate the value of Kp for each of the three experiments. All right, so we're going to write we're going to figure out Kp for experiment 1, Kp for experiment 2, and Kp for experiment 3. So we'll do experiment 1 together, and then I'll have you do the other two. So all they're doing in this table is giving us the numbers that we can use to plug in here. Since these are at equilibrium, we can just plug them in. So the pressure of xy2 is 1. Pressure of x is 2, pressure of y2 is 5. So 1 over 10, which is 0 0.1. So Kp for experiment 1 is 0.1. I want to have you do the same thing for 2 and 3. So for experiment 2, plug in your numbers. And then for experiment three, well, hopefully you found that your Kp for every single one was 0.1. Kp is a constant. It's an equilibrium constant as long as you are at the same temperature. So this entire table is at 298 Kelvin. It wants us to calculate Kp at 298 Kelvin. As long as you are at the same temperature, your ratio of products to reactants will not change. So even if one of the partial pressures changes, the rest of equilibrium, right, the rest of the equilibrium reaction, will have the same ratios. So the ratio of products to reactants remains constant as long as you are at the same given temperature. That's really important to remember. It's a constant. Any questions on examples five or six? All right, so now is going to be some time that you can um, kind of do some practice. So this is where we're going to look at the practice packet. Now we're going to come back to the notes. So you don't want to put your notes away. Um, but in the practice packet, so this is the, the second packet that you picked up, it says unit six practice at the top. I'm going to have you do page one and two. So you're writing and calculating the equilibrium constant. I have the answer key linked here. The answer key has pages one and two both. So when it says write the equilibrium constant, if you want to practice writing both, you can write KC and KP. I did that on the answer key. Now, if you look at page two, when it's having you calculate, it's giving you concentrations. So if you just want to write the Kc expression, you can. Now, what it does is number one on page one goes with number one on page two. So you write the K expression in number one on page one. Once you get to page two, they give you concentrations to plug in. Does 